Hello guys and welcome back to another official Friday Facts, the first one in quite some time here, almost two months, and uh, Friday Facts 361, Train Stop Limit, Tips and Tricks, and I am joined as always by Bombug. Hello, hello, how you doing X? You excited for this? I'm excited, man. It's been really just about two months since we've had one, and this is a really good one. Yeah, lots has happened. Uh, lots of hype over the 1.0 release and to to kind of be sad to see the Friday Facts go. Uh, and now I'm super excited with the crazy content that's in this one. It's going to be good. Yeah, for real. It's it's going to be really good. So the title doesn't seem super interesting, but once we dig into this, um, you guys, like seriously, you guys are going to want to stick around for this because this is some fantastic stuff here. So uh Clonin, this looks like this whole thing's written by Clonin pretty much, uh, except for a little section by Boss Kid. Uh, so he says, we finished with the regular uh, Friday Pack series, and yet there's so much we want to talk about. I want to clarify uh, that, that we're not going to release a Friday Packs every week, but there are a few of them coming in the near future. So that's kind of to be expected. Um, they got their break. They've uh, taken a well-deserved rest. Thank goodness. Yes. <laughs> For sure. Um, I'm actually going to be honest, and part of why I'm so happy, I didn't actually expect to see a Friday Facts this soon. Um, based on how hard they'd been working and the way they phrased things last time, maybe it was just my interpretation, but I actually expected to not see them back for like four or five months. Um, yeah, that's what I was feeling too. It, like, until they need it for hype for the full major patch or something, right? Yeah, exactly. And they're just hyping it early, I guess. <laughs> yeah, so this is super cool. Uh, so 1.1, the real 1.0. Uh, so really the point of 1.1 isn't to add some new content. The main motivation is to finalize all the existing features so that they work together in a proper way. It may sound a bit abstract and boring, but it will be explained more clearly in upcoming Friday Facts. Believe me, the sentence, I didn't know I needed this until now, will come to your mind more than once. And that's always a great thing. Um, this Friday Facts isn't actually like that. This Friday Facts is... I really needed this and thank you for putting it in finally because um, this is something that's been in really high demand and I'm so glad they're finally doing it. Um, so interestingly, the work on 1.1 actually started basically right after 1.0 release, so there's already lots to show. Right now, we aren't going to make any promises as to when it is coming, but we will keep you updated on our progress with these blog posts and give some notice before it is deployed. Though I'm quite certain that we are more than halfway through to keep you happy until it's here, let's go through some of the changes. So train stop limit. This is a very long section, guys, but we're actually going to read pretty much all this or maybe a little bit I summarize because this is awesome. So tiny story about Boss Kid's train related side project for a feature that was requested quite often. And some links here. Uh, so the problem. So basically, Here's the problem. Imagine the situation. You're sitting in your factory and you need more iron. Classic. <laughs> always need more iron. Yes, always. So uh, you build a nice railway to bring uh, ore from dedicated mining outposts back to your iron smelter. You build two ore outposts and you set up two trains, one for each. The two trains have a similar schedule. One goes from iron smelting one to iron ore one, and the other goes to iron ore two. This works fine. However, there's some problems when you want to expand your production. You want to just copy paste iron smelting one and have half the ore go to iron smelting two. Now you need to start manually reassigning trains trying to balance throughout throughput of the mines and what else. Uh, if an iron mine runs dry, then you need to rebalance the whole system, reassign all the trains from that station, have some omniscient overview of all the different routes your trains are running. With more mines and more smelting and more trains, this management becomes an incalculable problem, and frankly, it is not fun. Opinion. I would agree with that opinion. Agreed. Yes. So, it's very annoying. Um, so, there's an imperfect solution, and which works almost. Uh, that is to name all the ore stations the same and all smelting stations the same when choosing a destination. The train can go to any of the train stops with that name, which means... When you build a new ore outpost, you just name it Iron Mine, and the train will come and pick up from it. When you build a new iron smelter, you just name it Iron Smelter, and the train will come deliver some ore. When you build a new train, just copy-paste a simple schedule, and it'll start working effectively. And I do, myself, and many people I play with, and, you know, 
know uh, use this method at least with smelters. I don't really ever do this with the mines, um, but it's very common in bigger bases to just have like your drop off points all named the same station name for exactly this reason because um, then you can kind of let the trains choose where to go, you know, based on the station's empty and stuff. However, that goes into their next his next issue um, is that with a small issue with the system, it basically completely breaks the idea. And the trains are not clever, which is very true. They're, they're not clever at all. Um, so they'll path to an arbitrarily chosen train stop, but with the correct name based on destination distance and a few other factors. This means that it can be that it can easily happen that all the trains end up only servicing one iron ore pickup, while there are other outposts full of ore with no trains coming to pick it up. You can somewhat uh, relieve the issue using the circuit network to enable and disable train stops, which I've done before, and it does help quite a bit, but it's definitely a little bit of a pain, but it's only a half measure as well. For instance, you can still end up with 10 trains rushing to a single small iron ore pickup, which can cause the trains to queue on the main line and jam everything. Um, so yeah, that that is an issue. That's currently what we have to work with. Um, so they added the limit, and this is where things get really cool. So it's pretty simple, as good solutions typically are. You can set a train's limit in the train stop GUI, and as you can see here, and then uh, in the train stop keeps track of how many trains are in the station or on their way to it, which we call a reservation. When a train is choosing its next destination, it will check the limit of all stops with that name, and if a train stop has too many reservations already, it will skip over it. If all the potential train stops are full, the train will just wait. Uh, so this pretty much perfectly solves the problem with naming all the train stops the same and also solves a few other potential annoyances. For instance, previously, your iron smelter stacker would need to be big enough to fit all the iron ore trains at once because you uh, couldn't be sure that they wouldn't all return at the same time. Now you can set the train limit of the iron smelting train stop to the maximum capacity of the station, which means you can build a smaller stacker and be certain that will never become overcrowded. It's also controllable by the circuit network, by the way, so there's even more possibilities. Uh, one idea is keeping the train limit set to zero until there is a full load of ore available at the station, so that basically prevents a train from going there until the station is completely full uh, of ore. Uh, and you can also read the current number of reservations, which will have its own interesting uses. Uh, of course, with everything, there's an edge case. And we'll discuss this uh, between us once I finish these next two paragraphs. So there's an edge case we had to solve while working on the feature. What happens if the limit is lowered while a train is already on the way? Uh, so as you might imagine, that would be a problem. First idea was to force all trains that are on the way to repath and find a new destination. This works in many cases, but if there's no train stop it could path to, it would end up stopping and waiting in the middle of the track, ca causing untold economic damage. And I can, I can definitely see this being a massive issue. So... We decided that even if the limit is changed, any trains with a reservation will still go there. Uh, this means it isn't strictly a hard limit, but we think it is a good thing as setting the limit to zero provides an alternative, alternative way to control train behavior compared to when the station is disabled. Uh, basically, the train will only consider the limit when first deciding which train stops path to. After that, it doesn't care if the limit changes. Uh, and lastly, we also had to deal with the no path warnings. Uh, if the train stops were full to their limit, the train would show no path, which isn't very intuitive. Very true. So where the tra when the train can't find a path due to the train limit, it will show special warning destination full. So this is fantastic. Uh, what 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 are you what are you thinking with this? All right. So. I am definitely of the mindset that they were talking about at the beginning, uh, which is the, I didn't know I needed this until now, just because I'm a lot less of an experienced player than like you, for example, for sure. Mm -hmm. um, and I have not used any of like the, what is it? The logical uh, logistics train network style mods. Mm -hmm. I've just been going on my own, uh, really struggling, you know, uh, back when we did that post collapse stuff, you had to help me out with, <laughs> signals and stuff because i was i was not uh not getting it right this this instantly was like a, a game changer just like seeing this i'm like oh my gosh that makes everything so much better 
for one, because I didn't know that you could name all the stops the same, so I'm just discovering stuff that's already been there. Nice. But then seeing this trains limit, I'm like, holy cow, this is great. Man. Real awesome. What about you? I agree. This is fantastic. Uh, so it was a lot of text, a lot of reading. I know that um, it maybe was a little hard to understand. So just like my own summary. So basically, guys, this this is like a vanilla little bit dumbed down version of like logistic train manager which is mentioned down here which is a, a a mod um if you know what that is if you don't know what that is um this is just so nice because basically here's what you can do let's say you have uh let's say you have like three outposts three iron ore outposts and just one drop off station for the smelting and you have 10 iron ore trains uh, what you could do is you could set a limit, enable trains limit on each of the each of your three outposts. Set it to say three. So once three trains are are well, once one train's there and two are on their way, then the remaining seven trains won't path to that uh, or um, outpost. So then some of them will start to repath to the next one. Uh, and once some of them start to repath, then, you know, once that hits three, it will, you know, obviously fill up and say, you know, no more can come here and then they'll go to the next one and it will evenly distribute the trains now, which is really nice. This is fantastic. Although as I'm saying that I'm realizing one slight issue and maybe this is just, maybe this just won't happen. Um, but what I'm imagining is in that scenario I presented, if you have an ore outpost, three trains, one train's there, two are pathing to it, so that one can't accept anymore, right? What happens if your remaining seven trains, like, because wouldn't, because they all are saying they can't path to that first or, or outpost, so wouldn't they all try to repath to, like, the second one, and then and then like it because if it happens all at the same time then couldn't you just have like three at one and then seven at another because like, like i don't you know because like i don't know if they repath like an increment i mean obviously they wouldn't all be leaving the stage the drop off station at once so it probably wouldn't be an issue um unless you had like 10 drop off stations and all the trains happen to leave at once um then it could be an issue but i think yeah. that's a very very edge case uh, but overall, this this is fantastic. This just really helps balance out your outposts. The, you can do the same thing with your ore drop-offs. Um, you know, in my sending support is to space mega base. Um, we had a huge issue with trying to get trains to evenly distribute between stations and outposts, um, and we somewhat solved it with a super overcomplicated, convoluted um, thing we were calling a switcheroo, which basically just dropped ore off from one train. And then it was picked up by another train, like right at the smelter. It was really complicated, but this feature right here can basically eliminate stuff like that and just make it so much simpler. And like mega bases or even normal bases to just evenly distribute your trains. It's so nice. Yeah, definitely when people start getting into adding a lot of trains to their base or adding, uh, what do you call them? Uh, like robo ports into their base you start getting a little excited and you just put them everywhere and then you realize at scale things don't perform quite as well you start hitting a lot of that throughput issue right you mm -hmm. start you know you request an item and rather than the robo port delivering it to you from 10 feet away uh it goes to the other side of the base to get it and you're you're waiting for <laughs> robots to fly across 3,000 miles of uh, industrial wasteland effectively mm -hmm. and then yeah. with the trains you, you're getting you know you're getting deadlocked everywhere and it, it gets pretty crazy having more of these uh quality of life changes is definitely gonna make people not feel that pain as much when they're just trying to expand their base a little bit yes for sure it it's gonna be so nice um completely right it's <laughs> oh man it's gonna make expanding its scale so great um so they say to an outside observer, this really may seem just like a tiny little thing. It, it isn't. It's huge. Um, but for us, it is one of the most exciting features 1.0. Same. Or 1.1. 1 
Uh, I think it is also quite telling that something like this has been missing for a long time given the popularity of, like I mentioned, Logistic Train Network mod. While the train stop limit isn't quite as powerful as the mod, understatement, it is going to open up many possibilities and add a lot of interesting gameplay opportunities. Um, it says, I don't know if I'm alone in saying, but I like it when the rules of a system are very simple and the complexity emerges from the interaction of these simple systems. I think the train limit is a perfect example of a simple rule. Uh, that will lead to really interesting and complex behavior. I can imagine just riding around on an iron train with a simple pick up iron, drop off iron schedule, and it driving me around the whole factory is a chaotic interaction of train stop limits and other trains means each time it needs to travel somewhere else. I, I can imagine also a lot of fun design considerations will be needed when building such a rail network where traffic is less predictable than a static route system. So this is great. I can't wait until it's in the game. I may, hmm, I may have to consider doing a new mega base. Oh boy. Because with your great enemy, the train. <laughs> yes, but better trains. Uh, I mean, they would still kill me as much, but a lot of a lot of the frustration for me with mega bases was getting trains to work properly for what I wanted, and this helps a ton. Uh, so I'm super excited. But there is. Well, do you have more thoughts with this before we move on? Uh, just one. So with the uh, limit being changed while a train is uh, going in route to its destination, uh, they decided that it would just continue on to its route, right? Mm -hmm. I would love to see a mod, like a Karen mod, where <laughs> this, the train comes screaming in, and it's like, I have a reservation, and it just blows up any trains that are already there. That would be great. <laughs> that'd be that'd be pretty hilarious. It, it, I, it wouldn't surprise me if at some point that comes comes through. <laughs> oh man! You don't man. want to get in the way of an angry Karen train when she has a reservation. No, no you do not. Oh my goodness. <laughs> oh man. So this next section is tips and tricks, and this is one I think we can actually summarize somewhat decently. Um, it's a very good section, but it's easily summarized while still encapsulating the topic. So. Uh, basically, tips and tricks have been a feature in the game for a very long time. They began as a way to explain things to the players that were not explained anywhere else. The iconic example is the alt mode tip. Playing without alt mode is painful and even more painful to watch, so we had to tell the players somehow. Um, alternative idea, just for this, because this is a pet peeve of mine. Um, how about it's just on by default? Like, <laughs> I, I, I don't understand. I, I don't know. I don't know why it's not. Um, Obviously, that can't be, you know, done for every, you know, obviously you need tips and tricks for other stuff, but, um, like, you should also mention it in a tips and tricks, so peep, and when people alt-tab and then realize all their icons went away, they'll know what happened, but, like, this should be on by default. I, I don't understand why it's not. Um, this is one of my, this has been one of my biggest gripes. Um, it's just, like, it's, I mean, even, I mean, they say it. They, they say it themselves. It's painful to play without it. So why is it off to begin with? Shoot, man. I mean, for me, I didn't understand alt mode when I started, and uh, I couldn't figure out why these icons were appearing and disappearing because I was alt tabbing, right? Mm -hmm. And I got it into my head. <laughs> I got it into my head that I could only see the icons during the daytime in game, and that they <laughs> go away at night. Oh my and, like, god! That was my logic for a while until I figured out what was happening. I mean, I mean, based on the fact you didn't know, that's not bad logic. Like. <laughs> You know, it can be really confusing. So I really, really, really devs think this should be on by default. Um, anyway, so the early Rant days. Off. All right. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so in the early days, and he means the early days before even the Indiegogo campaign, that is a long time ago. Uh, first implementation of the tips and tricks was straightforward, but it was a bit rough. So basically the initial design, it would pop up when the game started. There was no back button. Um, There's no way to reopen it. The images were inconsistent sizes, so the GUI would jump around, and there was a built-in checkbox um, to turn them off. There was a built-in checkbox to turn them off, so it got the job done, but it wasn't great. The first refresh um, fell into a darker corner. It was low priority and wasn't really clear as if it was a graphics or programmer task to improve them. It was really more in the middle. Um, so um, this is where I came in. I would assume this is cloning. It is, I remember him working on these actually. So first improvements, you can click forward 
this is, this is uh, you know, we, we have this now or even a better version. Um, and you can choose, uh, you can close and open them with a hotkey. The images are re retaken to consistent resolution. In Zoom, you can open them in multiplayer, which is great. So, you know, when you and your friends who don't know what you're doing play together, you can open this. Um, so at this point, they shift to focus to the other tutorial channels uh, because they were hoping the mini tutorials and MPE, um, they wouldn't really need tips and tricks. Um, we think it's better if things like item usages are explained in the item tooltip rather than another GUI elsewhere. Apart from the GUI style updates, the tips and tricks were not changed significantly for the next major versions. However, 1.0, Clone took one last sweep through it, and uh, basically this included, the improvements he did in 1.0, included increase image size and update all images to high res, which is great. It helps when you can clearly see what's there. Um, added frames and sub panels to match the visual design of the new GUI, new button styles, generic close button in the top right, which is awesome. So that's, so then that's that, right? Um, Finally, rest and watch the sunrise on a grateful universe. Um, the inspiration for change actually came from the mini wiki found in Crastorio 2, which is fantastic. Um, the mod and both the mini wiki in it, um, and the information mod. So, um, basically, it has like an actual index of things, uh, and you know that has obvious pros. You can see the title of all tips right away. You don't need to click through the uh, through all the tips naturally allows categor categorization of the tips. The player has some idea of the tip content before clicking on it. Small item icons are very are visually appealing. Uh, however, with the deadline of 1.0 approaching, they weren't able to get it done in time. Um, the picture is worth a thousand words, though, and in this case, it is very true. So let's start with that. Uh, as we can see here, there's a section with the alt mode. Um, so now in 1.1, 1 .1, uh, there is a index, which is awesome. Uh, there is a, we can remove the forward and back buttons because obviously you can just go through the index. There's a search button, which is awesome. Uh, it searches using the tip titles. The tips are categorized and indented accordingly. There's a mark as red button. You'll get to that later. Uh, and some changes to the GUI layout. Um, an issue remains though, an issue that is small, but in the long, run and with compound interest it becomes a big source of pain the problem is that the tips uh are still using images which means they become outdated as we update things we have retaken all the screenshots many times now over the years so what can we do about it the simulation in this case a gif is worth a thousand images so let's start with that so man that's uh that's a lot that's a, that's a million words um <laughs> so uh, you can see we now have a GIF here, technically an MP4, on a web page, but we're putting GIFs in the game. What the GIF shows is the tips and tricks GUI live rendering a real simulation of the entities inside the GUI. This marvel of technology. Oh. I know, right? <laughs> that's actually that's pretty cool. I like it. It's pretty freaking awesome. Um, this marvel of technology is a divine GIF from the very top. Kovrex, of course. Um, the simulation widget solves quite a lot of the initial problems with the screenshot images, but we can go even further. Of course they can. Um, we can use the simulation not just to show a factory environment. Using the Lua script, we can create an entire scripted scenes and demonstrations. This is much more effective in many cases. For instance, seeing the building preview, the mouse movement, and hearing the real sounds makes a tip much more meaningful. Uh, oh, it has sounds too? Heck yeah. Yeah, dude. This is awesome. <laughs> This is so cool. Um, so yeah, you know, that way it stays current with the, you know, any new graphics and updates they add with that. And uh, it just, I mean, like they said, you know, if, if a GIF is, a, is worth a thousand images, then is a GIF with sound worth a thousand GIFs? Oh my god! Probably, probably not quite, but still. Um, the value of the tutorial section alone, the tips and tricks section is, is just gonna be beyond like what any library can hold. Yeah, I mean, seriously, this is, I mean, that's, that's insane. Now, now <laughs> the amount of words we're up to, um, this is just so cool. I think, I think it, it will be massively helpful, um, to have these here. And, um, really, I think this should eliminate a lot of confusion with the game. Like, 
th this is just, I can't praise this enough. This is really, really nice. Um, and then lastly, unifying the mini tutorials. So they have another problem. They had the mini tutorials GUI, so it's a weird and awkward situation. Some things are explained in the tips GUI and other things via the mini tutorials. Um, the mini tutorial GUI is quite a challenge in itself, and it has a lot of similar problems to the old tips and tricks GUI. Um, so they're just related, the images are just related to tech icons with the related items underneath. The text gives a short description of what you might expect from the tutorial. It would be pretty nice if the mini tutorials could have the same sort of features as the tips and tricks and index, nice big images enticing the player to click play button. So what if we just somehow put the mini tutorials in the tips and tricks GUI? It makes a lot of sense and unifies the communication channel. You know now that if you need help with a topic in game, there's one place you should look for some guidance, tips GUI. Um, I mean, the mini tutorials had some nice features. You know, they would only show if the player had met some requirements. They would be suggested to the player if they performed certain actions. For instance, the train tutorials would only show after you have researched rail technology, which makes sense. Um, and if they unify the two concepts, they can use the unlock and suggestion features for the tips and tricks. So, of course, they combine the functionality of the two systems. Many tutorials are still the same, but they are represented inside of the tip, and we uh, hook in so the suggestion dependency system to the tips. We added a mark as red button and tips will show once the dependencies are red and uh, That's pretty awesome Very cool Very uh, very cool. I remember One of the first times I was presented with the in-game tutorial stuff. It was on uh, trains and uh, I I was excited for having built the train and I'm just like Oh, I'll just close this and read this later because I want to just like look at my train right now. Uh, and then I couldn't figure out how to get it back up. And I'm like, all right, so now I don't know how to use a train and uh, I can't find a tutorial. Mm -hmm. So having all of this knowledge in one place, pretty key. I like it. Yeah, it's, um, man, it's so cool. And uh, hey, it gets even better. <laughs> the tips are moddable. Yay! Woohoo! There was much rejoicing. So, one last minor issue with the old tips and tricks is that they were hard coded in a sense. They were loaded from a very specific JSON file in the core data directory. That means that it was not possible for mods to add or change any of the tips. Um, it is only natural then with this update and modernization of the tips that we open up the system to modders. Internally, the tips work like any other prototype, so it is super easy for a mod to add their own entities. Um, and lastly, the skip scope of tips. When adding new tips, it was tempting to make tips for all the things. However, after some consideration, we decided to not go too far this way. Um, we don't want the tips and tricks to become a factoriopedia or in-game wiki. In general, the items and entities and general mechanics should explain themselves in more direct ways, such as the entity tool tips, which makes sense. And they basically just want them to explain mechanics like, you know, Splitters, belt lanes, long hand inserters, etc. Um, when something is related to combination of more items like gates or rails, copy paste stuff. The tricks, e, uh, e do the lab to the lab movement, stag inserters, drag building. Um, importantly, we should really only explain things the player um, players actually don't get. I never heard a complaint that someone doesn't understand how solar panels or accumulators work. So putting them in the tips and tricks would be just bloat, even if it technically fits the criteria. So there we go. Wow. The 1.1 is looking pretty cool. I wonder yeah. what other surprises they're going to have for us because they're already working on a ton here. Yeah. It's um looking pretty awesome. I'm waiting with bated breath for the Friday Facts that shows off the new assemblers. <laughs> Absolutely. Hint, hint. Devs. Hint, hint. Rant um, on. Rant off. Yeah. <laughs> so... Conclusion, they're pretty happy with it. And speaking of help, they need our help. What kind of tips would you have found useful when playing the game? Searching today, I learned on Reddit can be a source of inspiration, but it's still hard to compare the importance of individual independent Reddit posts, and also a lot of them are outdated. So if you want to give us feedback, the Friday Fact discussion is the best place. Yes, we do read Reddit. They do read Reddit, actually, pretty pretty actively. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I'm all over the place. Yeah, so do that, guys. Um, 
I'd be interested, um, just in case the devs watch this or for other people watching, um, what what would be a couple things you would list? Let's see. Uh, definitely the... I, I love that they have the alt information, like, right at the top there. Mm -hmm. Real nice. Um, I would like to see... I don't know a great way for them to fit it in, but uh, something about inserters uh, dealing with fuel because uh, I was very confused first time around um, inserting coal into my uh, what my steam engines or whatever right uh, mm -hmm. the, the ones making the steam because uh, they didn't fill up the uh, the entity with coal I, right. I was expecting them to fill it up and so I actually thought that the inserters didn't work because I didn't wait until they ran out of coal or were down to like you know one or two stacks mm -hmm. so i removed them and i'm like shoot well i guess i'm gonna be filling these by hand for the rest of the game uh which i did for about a 15 hour playthrough which was really cool until i saw you doing it and asked you about it and i'm like what the heck how are you doing that <laughs> right <laughs> so something about that would be would be pretty chill um i do definitely agree with them on not overfilling this and making it become a wikipedia of sort uh i would say most gamers do not look at uh tips and tricks in game guides very much they definitely rely on uh the the wikis now because wikis are so prevalent across all games uh and most of these sort of uh helps helping topics uh in games are just not really that important to look at especially if you've been a gamer a long time Mm -hmm. um so having them with really clear titles like this with gifts things that you can click through really easy and not too many of them is definitely an excellent choice on their part so that someone can be aware oh there's a tip about this thing that uh, i just unlocked and i can see it if i want to if it's confusing to me i can take a look and get a lot of information real quick just from the title the little uh, icon and then seeing a gift without even having to read necessarily mm-hmm so uh, lots and lots of good stuff there by keeping it minimal and just to what they think is important. Uh, for the rest, there is the Wikipedia, um, mm -hmm. you know, or I guess for everything else, there's MasterCard, right? Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, I think those are great ones you listed. Um, looking at what's already here, seeing like insertion limits under inserters, I think is a really great one because that can be really confusing yep. to people um and super helpful if you're ever making them all you know yes exactly um and like the low power thing and electric pole connections um so so far it looks like they have really good stuff like dragging electric poles fantastic mm -hmm. feature i mentioned it in all the tutorials i make um so it's good it's here uh but yeah this is great i'm super excited the train limit is fantastic the tips and tricks look really, really good. I'm excited to see what's in the next Friday Facts and what else they're throwing in 1.1. This is already pretty huge. So I'm really glad to see them back. And um, yeah, I, I think I don't really have much else to add. I, this has already been a really long video, but but this is all awesome. I, I'm so excited. Yeah, they are definitely doing things that... Uh... I think they should be spending time on, you know, there's plenty mm -hmm. of game updates out there where you're like, dude, why? Yeah. Why is half the dev team working on this? No one, no one wants that or no one cares, you know? Yeah. And Factorio just, uh, they don't really play the game that way. They actually make cool things. Yeah. They actually make cool things and stuff that people actually would find useful. Um, imagine that. Imagine that for sure. So that's it guys. I hope you enjoyed this. Um, hope you made it through the whole thing, and would love to hear your thoughts below in regards to the train stuff and the tips and tricks. And you know, do help them out by on the Friday Facts discussion on the Reddit as well as on the forums. I'd imagine links in the Friday Facts. Um, let them know what you think would be good tips and tricks for new players. And uh, yeah, I think that's gonna do it. And until next time, we will see you later. Catch you later.